Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandy Shaw, and I am presenting a training video on best practices using Universal Design Learning Framework and Principles. Please enjoy as you go through the, the training objectives. This training video will allow participants at the end of the session to be able to explain what is meant by universal design for learning, to describe the three principles of universal design for learning, and to explain the application of UDL to the classroom as it relates to best practices that are available. As we start the training, one of the first things that we're going to look at is what is universal design. Universal design for learning is a set of best practices that are used in mainstream education as well as special education that facilitators can use to design learning environments to ensure that the learning needs of the students are catered for. Our next focus is what are the principles of universal learning design? There are three principles. The first principle being provide multiple means of representation. The second principle being provide multiple means of action and expression. And the third principle being provide multiple means of engagement. So these three principles are the grounding principles upon which UDL is actually based. Principle one, which speaks to providing multiple means of representation, addresses the what of learning. What will the students actually be learning as they engage in the teaching learning process? Provide multiple means of representation suggests presenting learning content in different ways. For example, the teacher can use videos, the teacher can use audio, the teacher can use text, teacher can use graphs, teacher can use other means of multimedia to present the learner with the content. It is also found that this can provide better opportunities not only for disabled learners but for other learners in the classroom as well. Multiple means of action and expression addresses the how of learning. How do the students actually want to learn? Provide multiple means of action and expression indicate that most learners do not prefer the exclusive use of exams to assess their understanding and knowledge because of the restricted time and organizational setting of this measurement. Therefore, asking students to express their knowledge in other formats such as assignments, quizzes, interviews, scientific papers, multimedia presentations can reflect their knowledge more effectively than just using one method of measurement. Multiple means of engagement addresses the why of learning. Provide multiple means of engagement using only a lecture format or only one single format may affect learner engagement. Hence, it is important to maintain the levels of students' interest during an active lecture session using other strategies that can sustain student motivation. For example, delivering learning content using open-ended discussions, question and answers, peer tutoring, or an applied problem-solving approach. As we look at universal design, it is critical to note that there are some networks in the brain that are associated with universal design learning. And Alzawawe, Serini, and Lundquist 2016 indicated that multiple means of representation is tied to our recognition network in the brain. The authors also indicated that multiple means of action and expression are tied to the strategic network of our brain and 
in culminating, the authors also suggested that multiple means of engagement is tied to the affective network in the brain. So there is an interconnectivity between brain networks and the principles of universal design learning. As we continue with this training video, it is critical to note that there are some universal design learning strategies that help teachers to provide the best learning opportunities for students to learn. And if you click on the video below, you will be able to get an idea of what some of these strategies are. The link is right on the, course, on the page, so you can go ahead and click in order to view the UDL aligned strategies. As we continue to look at universal design for learning, there are some guidelines that we need to pay attention to. Under the principle of providing multiple means of representation, opportunities need to be made for students' perception. Teachers need to provide options for language and mathematical expressions and symbols. Teachers also need to provide options for comprehension. Under the principle of providing multiple means of action and expression, teachers need to provide options for physical action, meaning students should be able to respond using varying methods. Teachers should also provide options for expression and communication, meaning there should be the use of multiple media for communication. Teachers should also provide options for executive functions, meaning students should be guided in appropriate goal setting, in appropriate planning and working towards their academic development. And finally, in the third principle, provide multiple means of engagement. Teachers should provide options for recruiting interest. Teachers should also provide options for sustaining effort and persistence and teachers should provide options for self-regulation and self-directed learning, meaning students should see their learning as being purposeful as they, as they move towards becoming motivated learners. As we look at universal design and the framework in which it operates, one of the best practices include knowing the students. The facilitator needs to capture data on the students in order to determine the learning styles and preferences of the students in order to cater for their learning needs. One such tool is the VARK questionnaire. And the VARK questionnaire can be found online. And if you click on the link below, you will get an opportunity to access the VARK Another best practice of universal design for learning is flexibility. The teacher in the classroom has to try new cutting edge technologies, new methodologies and strategies to cater to the diverse needs of students. The universal design classroom needs to accommodate diversity. Another best practice as it relates to universal design for learning is creative technology usage. Technology presents several ways to present and share information. There is always technology to support the universal design classroom. Technologies such as blogs, podcasts, video streams, digital storytelling, websites, and many other technology tools can be used to make the teaching learning process more interactive and interesting. Another best practice in the universal design for learning is the use of traditional tactile modalities. Creative digital formats are critical in the universal design classroom. However, traditional tools such as interactive charts, manipulatives, and reading corners can also be used to enable the teaching learning process. The final best practice that will be looked at today is varied assessment options. Students have different learning needs and they are engaged differently. Hence, it is critical that different assessment options are used to measure the student's ability or to measure what they have actually learned. The references listed here 
or used to support development of this training video. Feel free to explore them for further information. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for watching. This presentation was developed by Sandy Shaw with the aid of the references presented in the reference section. Again, I want to thank you for listening.